why? Uh, lots of questions. Why? Why did you do it? Um, Julie's given me a new handle. I'm called founder. <laughs> um, it's not, it's, I've been called many things, and that's probably one of the more kinder ones I think I've been called. But all of this was fundamentally my idea. I came up with the idea to build this distillery and to build it here, and some of the fundamental basis for the, for the distillery and for the company. So I started the company back in 2011. And between 2011 and 2014, built a business because it was absolutely essential that we had a firm foundation to move forward so that we had, so we were able to deliver on many of the commitments that we were going to make. So Scott then joined me in 2014 and we lived in a port cabin and we built the distillery. But it wasn't as simple as that. We wanted to go back to understand We've got a blank sheet of paper, completely blank sheet of paper. There was never a distillery here before, never. So we have no heritage to hold us back, none. We had a blank sheet of paper, which is quite dangerous because you can go off and do all sorts of things. We had to have some kind of structure around what we were going to do. Both Scott and I are engineers, so we like to, you know, the, the old school examination prove from first principles that X equals Y. Let's go back to first principles. And that is where we come across the number three. Number three is really important to the distillery. In the 2009 definition of Scotch whiskey, paragraph three, subparagraph G, trust me, I'm right. It has the aroma and flavor of the materials used, the methods employed, and of its maturation. Materials, method, maturation, the three M's. So we took that and said, that's all we need to worry about is what materials we use, how do we use them, and how do we mature the resulting spirit. That is the core fundamentals of it all. We are very, very respectful of the industry. I mean, I, I've been in the industry for 45 years. It's looked after me really, really well. So I have a lot of respect for the industry. And I have a lot of respect for the industry's traditions. I respect the traditions. Over here is called dogma. Lots of people say, but that's the way you have to make it. I look at the rules and I go, no, no. That we just push to one side. We are not interested in dogma. We are interested in the industry's traditions. We're, we are very respectful of those traditions, and above all, we're very respectful of the definition of Scotch whisky. We are not one of these companies who wants to rip up the rule book and shred it and go off, because without that rule book, we are on very soft ground, and I don't like that. So we're very respectful of traditions, and we stick to the rules. But we understand the rules, we've read the rules, and that is where paragraph three, subparagraph G comes in, with materials, method, and maturation. We have no heritage here, we have no history, we've nothing. All we've got to offer is the contents of the bottle. So we focus on the contents of the bottle. Because when I was working through in the, in the industry, I kind of came across a number of frustrations of the industry. And one of which was I kind of felt that we were losing the contents of the bottle. It was all about everything else and not about the contents of the bottle. It wasn't about the flavour of the whiskies that we were making. It was all this, it was all that. It was all flashing lights. No. Contents of the bottle and what surrounds the contents of the bottle. So by going back to our three M's, we said, well, what, what methods can we employ that allows us to manipulate the three M's to give us a flavor profile? Now, I said I spent a number of years building a business. One of the ways we kind of came to that is what I would call the triangle. So you've got three major malt distilleries, and you put them one there, one there, and one there. If you make a whiskey that goes bang in the middle, what have you got to offer the world? 
So we wanted to make sure we had a flavour profile that sits over here that is ours. We never ever want to do a me too. Oh, we've got one of them too. No, don't want to do that. We want to have our own piece of ground that is ours. And by employing the different methods that we've got, changing the materials that, that we use and maturing it in a specific way, we then move ourselves out of that triangle and into an area that is ours. I'm not going to tell you that's what we've done. I'm going to let you decide for yourselves. We will show you how we do it and give you an opportunity to taste the whiskies for yourselves. So another, ask, another frustration that I had with the industry and the way it was operating, and I felt there was an opportunity to kind of rebuild a piece of that. And that actually was to step outside the distillery for a moment. Now, I'll give you a bit of personal history and how far back I went. But my father was a distiller. And when he started, the distillery had a floor maltings. Like all the distilleries had a floor maltings. And they secured the barleys locally. And they managed the whole process. <coughs> In the 1960s, that floor maltings, a number of them changed over to Saladin boxes, and then it moved over then into kind of centralised maltings. But in parallel with that, there was a lot of development around barley varieties, and then the farmers started growing specific barley varieties. That then led on to what I would call the, the commoditization of barley, and then the homogenization of barley. There are some maltings whose smallest storage bin is 500 tons. I mean, we use 10 times that in a year. So 10 of those bins would keep us going. So I felt that what was happening during that period, which really started around the 60s and well into the 70s, that the farming world and the distilling world began to go in this direction and there was a loss of disconnect. That's really a reflection of the world. It's not a reflection of specifically of the whiskey world. I mean, how many people think that meat comes in a plastic bag? You know, how, how many people wouldn't even know that grain grows in the field because it comes out of a wooden box? No, I think there's been a disconnect and that disconnect is general. I also felt that there was, although Scotch whisky is produced in Scotland, I felt that there was a loss of provenance. And I felt that, well, which bit of Scotland? Where do you come from? Where is your, where is your roots? So by building the distillery here in Fife, we have set up a supply chain where we, for all our branded whiskies, all the cereal is grown here in Fife. So when we were kind of working on, on the design of the distillery and, and lots of things, we, we came up with phrases that we used to stick to the wall on the inside of the port of Cabot. One was there was lots of other distilleries being built at the same time, so we said, not just another malt distillery. We had to be different, we had to set ourselves apart. This is where we then came up with Fife grown, Fife distilled and Fife matured. So we planted a flag here in Fife. Why Fife? It used to be a very strong distilling area, faded out in the 1930s, and really nothing happened between the 1930s until Daft Mill opened up a few years ago. And then a number of distilleries began to grow. But here in Fife, we were free to do really what we wanted to do. There was no expectations. If you built it in space, well, you're building a space age distillery, aren't you? I don't really want to do that, I want to do something else. Well, I expect that. Here in Fife, we didn't have expectations. So we were then all free to go off and do what we wanted to do and to develop our own particular styles. But we wanted to retain provenance. We wanted it to be Fife grown, Fife distilled and Fife matured. Everything that we dis distill here at the distillery is matured in the warehouses next to the distillery. It doesn't go anywhere else. It's all retained here. Fife actually is very fortunate in its geography. It's surrounded by water on three sides. 
It has the Firth of Tay to the north. It has the North Sea to the east. And to the south is the Firth of Forth. It's really obvious. It's there. So if you said, you know, just very quickly say, well, where is Fife? Well, do you know where Edinburgh is? Yeah, well, it's just north of Edinburgh. Do you play golf? Some people, unfortunately, will say yes. Well, you know where St Andrews is. So it's very quick, it's very obvious, and it gives people a sense of place. And I think that was very important. Does it make a difference? I, I'm not going there, but it's where it comes from. And I think being, giving ourselves good, clear provenance is important to us. That it is five grown, it is five distilled, and it is five matured. We stick to our three M's, and we've kind of structured the day around the three M's. So we go first of all to the middle end, which is our method, which is our distillery, and we'll walk you through there and explain a bit more about that. Then in this afternoon we go to the, the, the first end, which is our materials, and then we go into our maturation. So the plan really is now for me and Scott to guide you around the distillery. We'll take the time that it's needed to do that. Uh, I repeat, if you've got a question, ask the question and we'll do our best to answer all of that. You just touched on a little bit about our logo. The logo. <laughs> Some of you were, were here when we opened the distillery in 2016. Um, I built, I, I, I formed the company in 2011 and I told nobody, particularly my current employer at the time, um, <laughs> saying nothing, I set the company up. Um, I kept, I just basically didn't tell anybody what I was doing. Uh, we got planning permission and thank goodness that just went below the radar. Nobody knew about that. We didn't say anything about that. We started building the distillery. We told nobody. We told nobody about that. We started distilling in December of 2015. We told nobody. We didn't. When we have something to say, we'll say it when we were ready to say it, and not before. So we didn't tell anybody because, okay, so if somebody's building a distillery, well, there's a whole heap of other people building a distillery. So we're not going to say anything. So then in May 2016, we invited people to the opening of a distillery that many people didn't even know existed. So really, that was actually a bit of an exclamation mark. We burst onto the scene, look, we're here. But that now has morphed into something that's, that's important for the distillery. And it's a phrase that we have here, which is every drop is precious. And that's every drop is precious. We have got here at the distillery three priorities. And they're not equal. One is more important than the other. Number one priority is everybody goes home safe. We look after our people. Number two is quality. And number three is efficiency. We will always sacrifice efficiency for quality and consistency of quality. So every drop is precious. It's precious to us. We worry about it and we look after it in every way we can. And the detail really, really matters. And that's why we talk about drops, because each drop matters to us. It is the detail that matters. So this really sums up the distillery, every drop is precious. We want to talk about the flavour. We want to make sure that the flavour is our flavour. And it speaks of this place as being ours. So every drop is precious. And that you will see on a lot of the packaging and on a lot of the, uh, the, the, the kind of work that we do in communicating about the brand. That says to me, all I need to do is see that. And that, I know that's engineering distillery. That's our icon.